Hey guys, welcome back to the Daily Smash for Wednesday afternoon, January 4th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. It's our last show from Cabo. We're leaving <laughs> soon. I hope, actually, that our flight takes off on time and that we get home safely. Me too. Um, we have been here a long time. And I are you eager to get home? I'm just eager to go work out and have my routine. Like, you know, cook and eat healthy and, yeah. you I know, I, I just, I just... I, I miss my routine, you know? I do, too. Um, I love it down here. I love it down here. Wow. But it's not our home. And Jolie said, because she's been with us on this trip, and she said that she was looking forward to sleeping in her own bed. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it is nice sleeping in your own bed. It is. We've had some nice beds, not going to lie. Uh-huh. Including here at the JW Marriott. I'm just they're, They didn't put us up or anything, and we're paying for the room, but I do give them props this this property is really nice yeah and it's it's north of of cabo um but julie area. has her own room and i feel bad having mm -hmm. her there you know like in her own room by herself it's like not being i don't know i, I know she's almost she, 17. she has her own room at home i know but i don't know i, I just like her next to me i get it and she, i think she liked her privacy though and i liked our privacy yes i do too <laughs> 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 um, we have some uh, some cool stories coming up and a cool uh, another reel of the day uh, that uh, China bungee jump. But I, I want to show. I want to just talk about uh, Acre first, the, where we had dinner last night. Acre, I call it Acre. Yeah. So over here on this, I don't know if this, this is the north end. I don't know where JW Marriott is. Um, they have this area and it's so cute and it's like all farm to table restaurants. So they have floor farms amazing i love that place that's like one of my favorite places to go when i come to cabo yeah it's awesome it's so cute it's like yeah. farm retail it's just adorable there if you ever come to cabo go to flora farms but it's not just a restaurant they have they grow their own vegetables they have a lot of land around the restaurant they have homes that they built and are selling and an acre right nearby or acre has um hotel they, rooms hotel rooms so they have tree houses so you can stay in these tree houses and everything is like sustainable like they have all, everything is like grown there all the food they it, have uh, what do they have like a donkey farm or they something? have a donkey farm they have like a sanctuary for dogs like it's a really neat cool the restaurant rustic was, it looks like you're in the jungle it, yeah there were so many palm trees and it was so lushly uh uh landscape, landscape thank you <laughs> it was it was one of the most beautiful restaurants i've ever been i have to say it was absolutely stunning just the way they set it up and we were there at night lit up um the food was really good except i think we didn't order all the right things i ordered i love uh, octopus grilled octopus yeah i thought mine was good but it was rich i, I could only eat a few bites i like the burrata um burrata was salad. fantastic and they had these cheesy biscuits really good And it was so funny because i go oh my god i love these cheesy biscuits i used to eat them with my nana my grandma <laughs> At Red Lobster uh -huh. when I was younger. And Julie goes, do you realize I've never been to a Red Lobster, a TGI Friday's, an Olive Garden, or an Applebee's? Or an Applebee's. And I looked at her and I go, oh my God. And then I go, you have been to an Outback. And Julie goes, I've never been to an Outback. And I go, yes, I have. She goes, yes, I do remember because you like the chocolate thunder from down under. And I like the blooming onion. And Rick goes, when was the last time you've eaten at an Outback? Yeah. And it must have been when she was six years old when we were out of town. That was like the only Ten years movie. ago. Yeah. And Kelly goes, I love Outback. I go, we should go now and see if you still love Outback. So I think we're going to do that. I we're going to put it on the smash. <laughs> we're we're going to go to Outback. She's like, do you think it's as good as Matro's? I'm like, mm, I don't think so, but maybe. Well, <laughs> We're going to find out. Well, it's not like it's not like prime steaks like what we're used to from, you know. No, but it's affordable. Eddie V's, but it is affordable. And I do like that Bloomin' Onion. And okay. I do like that chocolate thunder from Down Under. Well, the, and what I told Jolie. And I do like a baked potato with sour cream, chives, and bacon. I like it without the sour cream. Mm. But what I told Jolie was when I used to travel for work all the time, we'd often go places like Fort Hood, Texas, for example, where all they have are chain restaurants. Yeah. They don't have, I mean, not maybe they have some, but, you know, it's filled with chain restaurants. And when we would go out for dinner at night, it was like, oh, where are we going tonight? Applebee's or TGI Friday's or... Olive Garden, 
or Outback because that's what it was just every single one you can think of they would have it on the main highway there and that was like where everyone went out to eat we used to work when I was working um, in advertising we would go to Olive Garden for lunch and we'd get all you can eat salad with all you can eat breadsticks <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story honey <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you showed me this uh, reel of the day. The, I thought it was hilarious. I, I don't know where it is. I don't know anything about it. Just that they're, they're making fun of these people who are on this bungee jump platform. I yeah. thought it was funny when I watched it. I watched it like 10 times. So we're going to play it for you here. what would you do would you would you jump off of that thing no there's no way right no way i've done something similar kind of at six flags up in like like chicago area where yeah. they put you up like this and then they let you go and you kind of like like do a superman right you know I i've done that and that was fun but you know that's like that looks really scary i was i was living and working in south florida for five years and working at a local tv station and bungee jumping this is like 89 or 90 bungee jumping had just become a thing and people were dying at bungee jumps but there were a couple in fort lauderdale and so we went and did a story on bungee jumping and were they scared how are they staying open what what were their safety precautions and of course normally a reporter this reporter participation like you want to show well this is how you do it and and if i had been brave enough it would have made a better story i would have strapped on the equipment and i would have taken a plunge for the for the sake of the newscast but I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm kind of scared of heights. I didn't want to jump off but, the platform. But your ex-girlfriend, Lauren, made you skydive. Well, she didn't make me. Well, she kind of did. Kinda you said, she, you... No, she asked me if I wanted to, and I said no. And she said she wanted to, and like she kind of shamed me into doing it. She was like, well, a big war course she's sky, She's scared to jump off a plat, you know, out of a plane. So I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll do it. She and skydive I skydive shamed you? Yeah, she sky shamed me. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it, and it was an incredible experience. And you asked me, would you do it again? And I was like, if you want to go skydiving. I would never. I'll go with you. I would never do that. But on my own, there's no reason why I would. I just, it's not my thing. But it was cool. So. I would never. Um, I want to talk about this Bronwyn story. So Only because. Karen, Karen, one of our Patreons, emailed or uh, texted me this thing about Bronwyn. And she goes, what the hell is wrong with her? And I said, the lady is certifiably insane. Okay. Allegedly. Alleged. <laughs> allegedly. Um, uh, when she sent that to me, and I was like, Can I tell "What's what wrong the story with her?" Is? So here you go. Uh, Bronwyn. How does page six writing page, about her? Page six, New York Post, page six. I, I don't know why they would. But it was ridiculous. It's almost like someone planted it there. That Bronwyn sparked engagement rumors because she posted a picture of her with her new girlfriend wearing rings. Isn't she always getting engaged? And she said she was looking for a forever home with her girlfriend. Uh, her girlfriend of five months, Jennifer Spinner, sported flashy diamond rings in Windenburg's quickly deleted Instagram story Monday. We started 2023 with a promise and a heart she wrote and and it just made me think well didn't she just sue her husband saying she only had she had less than three grand in her checking account and now she's sporting a diamond ring and 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 she also said she was a great mom and she's not spending the holidays with her kids she's on the east coast looking for houses how are you looking for a house when you can't pay a bill yeah and you're out asking your husband for 10 grand a month and you're saying you're a great mom when you have little babies at home so I think this was a plant to, to show that she, even though she was away from her family again and, and you know running around with her new girlfriend, that 
they want to make it look like she's shopping for her family. She has her kids at, at heart because they're house hunting. Well, you know, the thing is, okay, she's got two twin kids, Caden Curran, nine years old, two twin little boys, nine. They have Koa, seven, and Hazel, four years old. Four years old is a baby to me. And a seven-year-old is a baby. And a nine-year-old is a baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you doing this? Like, I, I just don't understand why they are celebrating or even, like, I mean, honestly, I wear a Drunk Wives Matter hat and I get, like, pounded by these woke idiots. I mean, I, and they're celebrating this? I just don't understand it. Can you guys, can you guys riddle me this, please? <laughs> riddle me this. I can't answer it. I, I'm just, I'm surprised that there's never in these glowing articles about her new love and now she's looking for a home. Why is there no mention of the fact that she's suing her husband and says she has no money? But why do they just say, oh, she's house hunting. She doesn't have any money. Oh, she's, she's a great mom, but she's not with her kids. Like, I, I don't see how she gets away with it. But, but no, but 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 they'll no show one calls her. calls her out. But but on the Daily Mail, they'll have like they they paid for it obviously, uh, or allegedly. I don't know. But they're having at the OC Fair Winter Festival, and they have them showing them as a co-parenting family. Yeah. Like, why are they giving this idiot all these accolades when she's a loser, <laughs> a loser that has twenty nine hundred dollars in her checking account? Like, and, and she's not, you know, a, a good mom, obviously. She's looking for a house as a forever home. When this is the fifth girlfriend that she's introduced to her children. I, I, I don't understand it. How you yeah. feel? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Was that a Kelly's rant? Yes, it was. Okay, cool. A little bit. I want to give you a chance to go off. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, a couple of viewer comments. Oh, my God, Kelly, that chick's ass. Oh my gosh! Oh, we saw her again. Saw him. him again. We saw him again. He was by the pool again. And Julie saw it. That guy has a, like a really nice butt. <laughs> like honestly, wearing another banana hammock. He did, but it, he's like, got. It looks a like he's wearing ladies on uh, ladies bathing suit bottom. Like a g-string. Or was that a man's bottom? I, I I don't know. It had to have been a man's. I think they made g-strings for men. Of course they do. I mean that's that's the normal wear in Europe. Someone else wrote, I actually would like the second book, because my book comes out January 24th, the second book to be about Rick and Kelly's adventures, where they recount their encounters with celebrities, both good and bad, the trips that they have taken, and which places they liked and didn't, and their advice on how to be in a happy marriage. Yeah. That was, that was my first thought, that we would do a... a, a how would you even write a book on how to, how, how to have a happy marriage? Oh, I don't know. But I was, I was going to write a book about our adventures. I don't know how, how you could write a book on... on having a happy marriage I mean you, you could, either have chemistry and love that's the key chemistry. And, and not having like another partner that's like um, a know-it-all uh, that's the worst when you have like a if you know what I'm talking about like a narcissist yeah. that like like well, you, you're dumb and everybody else is he's smart and everyone doesn't know what they're talking about it, it should be equal the relationship should be equal i mean i try to put you first all the time but you put me first all the time too yes. like it, you know we we treat each other like gold and that's so important yeah listening and loving and having that chemistry is and being open and honest i think yes honesty is very honesty is key Kentucky Girl said, Rick, I am so excited to read, listen to your book. I want to thank you both for sharing your trip with us. I love the scenery and the sound of the waves. I can almost smell the ocean. Aw. Prayers for Jolie's trip. It sounds like so much. I guess they're talking about her trip to Vienna and Prague. Yeah. Or when she tripped on the beach. Oh, Jolie's <laughs> have a nice trip. See you next fall. <laughs> yeah, Jolie's leaving in 10 days to Vienna and Prague for she, on a 10-day trip for school for MUN. Yeah. Pretty proud of her. It's, it's an exciting. I mean, to be that age and be going overseas, like going to Europe, and then she's going back and for four months. Well, I, I sent her on the her. New York Times uh, school trip. She hated it. She said, "Well, this, this time she's going to be with her boyfriend and a bunch of friends. I think she's going to have a great time." Yeah, me too. Yeah. In the news now. In the news. A Starbucks barista has released her five biggest pet peeves. What are they? When they say. Uh, light on the cream, half almond milk, a <laughs> uh, little of this with a dash of cinnamon with oat milk mixed in with, like, you know how everyone has these stupid. Well, her top one is when people are online and then they take another whole five minutes to tell us when they want when they get to the cashier. 
So like you're online and you're not, you don't, you're not ready when you get to the counter. Right. Are you ready when you get to the counter? I always say I want an oat milk latte right. with a dash of cinnamon. I, I know now what to get you. That's it. No, I'm I do. Simple. I already knew that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but she was worried that she might lose her job because you're not supposed to, I guess, put this out there. What? What is it? She also, uh, well, just any saying anything publicly as uh, Starbucks. No, but what, what was her, what does she not okay, like? Okay, well, that was number one. Okay. She also despises those who order milk alternatives, such as almond, oat, and soy products, but then to p- proceed to ask for sweet cream cold foam <laughs> on top of the tr- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she says people who are un- unable to drink dairy shouldn't be adding heavy milk and cream to their beverages. Her next issue is with customers who order new items they have never consumed before and then not like it. And then she brings it back. They bring it back. I don't like this. and They want something else. Dude, my friend um, uh, owns this Vietnamese restaurant in Corona Del Mar. And it's actually my girlfriend V's cousin. Yeah. The one that's an actress now I told you guys about. It's a really good restaurant. So she's like so she has all these Vietnamese cooks in the back that are from Vietnam barely speak English and then you get these people that want alternative everything right oh (laughs) trying to explain things to the chef yeah and they're like you know they're from Vietnam I mean they don't have oh let's have gluten free this and uh, non GMO that and uh, you know I want to Prom, uh, possible uh, chicken on this, and uh-huh. or you know what I mean, That's like, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like they're 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 taken for a loop. You want to hear the last two? Yeah. Um, the next one is they see something online, some random recipe, and they ask them to make it. And the, and the barista doesn't know how to make it. So they have to look it up on TikTok, look up the drink, and then try to make it. And they might get it wrong five times. Oh, that's BS. Yeah. I'm like, sorry, we don't make that here. I mean, why um, can't they just say that? And then her last annoyance is when she's brewing a latte and then all of a sudden the person changes their mind and says they forgot to say iced. Oh, yeah, you do that. <laughs> you do no, that. No, I always say iced. I want an iced coffee. I want an iced oh, yeah, cold brew. And I'll tell them I want you to pour it over ice. If they just give you, like, in a cup, I'd like, put it in your biggest cup and pour it over ice because I love ice. <laughs> and the last story, which I don't think you knew about, i like to surprise you. Uh, thank you. It's Equinox on January 1st had what the New York Post calls a bizarre we don't speak January campaign that wouldn't let people sign up for the gym on January 1st. Oh, oh, someone's at our door. Yeah. Hang on one second. Don't you don't you find it strange that we didn't get to this hotel until we didn't get into this room until about four? We did yeah. get a late checkout to four, but why is it that the checkout is at, check in is like at around three or four? Yeah. And then they make you leave at ten. It so should they can be clean a, the room for the next person. But I think it should be a twenty-four hour deal. If you're paying eight hundred dollars a night, you should have a twenty-four hour deal. I don't disagree with you, but I also understand the logistics of it. That means that someone else would have to wait till six or seven to get in their room because we were here till four. But if American Express offers that to platinum card holders yeah. to have a late checkout till four, then obviously the hotel has some I mean, kind of thing. Yeah, they're not a hundred percent occupancy or whatever. Um, so anyway, that was the maid telling us, wondering why we weren't out of the room yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, Equinox had this strange campaign, I think. Um, that it said it's not you, it's January. When you went, if you went on the Equinox website to try and join on January first, you'd get a message saying it's not you, it's January. January is a language we don't understand, a fantasy delivered to your door in a pastel colored box. It talks about change. It wants you to start something when you should be in the middle of it. It thinks time is on its side. It needs a new outfit before it can begin. Stalling, shortcutting, giving up. We don't speak January. What, can you riddle me that? Again? So what they're saying is they didn't want people to newcomers to sign up on January 1st just because they think it's the New Year's resolution. They would think they want to get in shape and they're actually not going to use the gym and they're not true fitness people. Dude, why? This is a business. Right. Why wouldn't you want to make money? I think <laughs> like they that is ridiculous. They put a message on there that said, uh, look, I, we look forward to welcome you, welcoming you to our Equinox community tomorrow. That's stupid. 
I agree. And we have a follower on Patreon, I'm a subscriber s- on Patreon, Bree. Uh-huh. It works at Equinox, and I can't wait to ask her about it. I can't wait to ask her, too. She works there, and and we actually, she gave us a, a membership at Equinox in Newport Beach for like a couple months just yeah. to try it out. Uh, it's a great gym. It is. But but I, I had the same reaction. Like, why would you turn business away? I'm going to ask Bree. I wonder how many people wanted to sign up and then were pissed off that they couldn't and then went to another gym. Well, I would totally go to another gym if I read that BS. Equinox gives you know such what? losers vibes. You know, you start, a, 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 whenever you want to start it. When it, There is no right w- way of starting an exercise plan. There's no wrong way. Of start. When you have, in your mind, you want to start working out and getting healthy and get fit, and, you're, and you own a gym, yeah. you welcome everybody. Right. That's ridiculous. Someone on Twitter says, I'm like, take your resolutions somewhere else. Like, fine. Go take your resolutions to another gym. And I, I wonder, like, I wonder if they fired the person who came up with this idea for a campaign. They yeah. thought it was edgy and And different. who thought that that would be okay? Like, like you own a gym. Like, you are a gym. Like, like I, I would never, if I was a senior executive of, of that company, would ever think that was okay. Because working out is for everybody whenever they feel like it in their head to turn it on. It's like it's like someone saying, I'm an alcoholic and I need to get sober for right now. Oh, sorry, we're going to turn you away because we, we can't let you get uh, sober and get healthy because it's January and it's not a resolution. So right. we're, we're like, going like to turn a, you right away. A I mean, rehab that might have been A rehab a re- facility a rehab. says, no, you can't come in today because it's, yeah. it's January 1st. I'm sorry. You yeah. Have, you come back tomorrow Yeah. when we know for sure that you want to get clean. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Well, we hope it works out for you, Equinox. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got a pack. Yeah, we have to. And the maid wants us out of this room. Yeah, the, she knocked on the door. Yeah. Um, thank you again, everybody. Thank you, guys, everybody. I hope we entertained you a little bit. Yeah, we hope and you. And I hope you guys have a smash-tastic day. And we hope we'll see you again here tomorrow. Yeah. Take care. Bye.